they're not going in hard enough. Swing back into attack once again. From the last defence line now to the half-back line. Australian football is played on an oval ground. It can be between 110 and 155 metres wide and 135 to 185 metres long. The centre circle is three metres in diameter. There are two inner goal posts at least six metres high and two smaller outer posts called behind posts at least three metres high. The kickoff rectangle extends nine metres from the goalposts into the playing arena. Richmond is the first team onto the ground for the grand final, the climax of the season before a huge crowd at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. They'll be playing against Carlton in this championship game. A team, 18 players and two reserves. The coach may also use an official runner to communicate with his players during the game. And here come the umpires. Umpire Bill Deller in charge of the game, holding the ball. On either side of him, the boundary umpires, and behind them, the goal umpires. Four 25-minute playing quarters with rest breaks in between. Total playing time, 100 minutes. Umpire Bill Della tosses the coin, the captain's call. And it's Nichols of Carlton who wins the toss and decides to kick from right to left. Everything in readiness for the start of the first quarter. Here's umpire Della. Bounces the ball in the centre and the grand final is underway and it's Carlton who have the immediate advantage. The object of the game to score more points than the opposition. The ball is bounced in the centre circle to start the game. Once the ball is bounced, the players can enter the centre circle and they try to hit or palm the ball to their own teammates. This is called the hit out. This centre bounce is repeated at the start of each quarter and after every goal scored. A goal is scored when the ball is kicked between the two inner goal posts without being touched by any other player. One goal, six points. When a goal is scored, the goal umpire indicates the fact by waving two flags. If the ball is kicked between the goal posts but is touched in transit by a player, a behind is scored. One behind, one point. For a behind, they wave only one flag. When a behind is scored, play restarts with a defender kicking the ball into play from the kickoff rectangle. If the ball travels between the goalpost and a behind post, or hits or passes over a goalpost, then a behind is scored. If the ball passes over or hits a behind post, no score. A goal, six points. A behind, one point. Jackson of Carlton grabs the ball. His quick kick goes towards the Carlton forward area. The ball punched away by the Richmond defence. Here's a chance for Walsh, who comes in on the scene. He can't quite get his kick. The ball rebounds, and the chance goes out towards the centre wing. It's a scramble of players out there. Finally, it's Gallagher of Carlton, who's pulled too high, and the first free kick of the game goes to the Carlton Rover for being pulled around the neck. Gallagher, with his left foot kick, puts Carlton deep into attack. The players fly for the ball. It comes off hands. A chance for Walls. Picks up with his left boot and kicks towards goal, but it's offline, a behind only, and Carlton have the first score of the grand final on the board. One behind to Carlton. The Richmond fullback, Dick Clay, will put the ball back into play. Clay with a long kick finds the centre of the ground. A big pack of players fly for the ball. It comes off hands to Richmond. Richmond going forward, up towards the full forward area. Here's Mackay of Carlton. Oh, drops an easy mark. Forced a hand pass across goals to O'Connell, his back pocket player. O'Connell's quick kick goes out towards the half forward area. Here comes Bartlett. Bartlett an extra hand pass. Now, what can a player do? 
he can hand pass the ball in any direction by holding the ball with one hand and hitting it with the clenched fist of the other hand. He can run with the ball, provided he bounces it or touches it to the ground every 10 metres. He can kick the ball in any direction. He can mark the ball. That is, if he catches a ball which has been kicked more than 10 metres and he catches it before it hits the ground or is touched by another player, then he is allowed a free kick without interference from the other team. A player taking the mark can, if he wants, disregard the free kick and play on. A player can tackle or block an opponent in possession of the ball with the use of hips, shoulder, chest, arms or open hands. He can grab him between the shoulder and the knee. He can also shepherd or block an opponent from tackling a teammate or getting to the ball, provided the ball is not more than five metres away. There are quite a few things a player cannot do, and the penalty for an infringement is a free kick to his nearest opponent. If the ball goes out of bounds, the boundary umpire stands on the boundary line and throws the ball back over his head towards the centre circle. If a player deliberately kicks or forces the ball out of bounds, or kicks it out without bouncing, then a free kick is given to the opposing side from where the ball went out. But it's Richmond into attack. It's a long one to Royce Hart, his captain at centre-half forward. Hart goes for the long kick towards goal. It's punched away, hits the ground, comes to coming, runs into an open goal and bangs it through. First goal on the board to Richmond. Richmond now kicking from right to left and Carlton leading 52 points to 34. Della bounces the ball in the centre once again and the game is underway and once more it's Carlton who have the advantage first off. They enter defence, a kick off the ground favours Richmond, Richmond coming away, the shot by Morris gets onto his left boot, it's close, wait for the goal umpire, it's a goal, a goal to the Tigers, Richmond fighting back. Boundary umpires bringing the ball back to the central umpire Bill Della after that splendid goal on the left foot by Morris. 52 to 40 the score for Carlton as Della bounces the ball in the centre once again. Again it's Jones who wins the tap but Highwood of Richmond from the half back line sends Richmond deep into attack. The ball punched away. A chance once again for Sproul. He fumbles. Loses the run of the ball. In he comes. Oh! Over the top goes a Carlton player right into the back and Sproul will get the free kick for a push in the back. The Carlton player Armstrong guarding the mark hoping to knock down that kick by Sproul. He elects to drop kick. Sends the ball up towards the Richmond attacking area, but a fine mark by Southby stems that Richmond attack. Southby in the last line of defence. Kicks the ball out towards the centre wing once again, favouring the punt kick. A big pack of players flying for the ball. Nobody can bring the ball to ground. There are 18 playing positions. Three forwards, three half forwards, three centres, three half backs, three backs and three roving players, known as the Ruck. The Ruck is really a team within a team. There is a rover and two followers. They are at the centre bounce and one of their main functions is to gain possession of the ball. But they should be in the game the whole time. They need to be fast, mobile and strong. A Ruck might swing into action at bounces or throwings up to 120 times in a match. So what an advantage a winning ruck makes to a team. The backs or defenders are there to save goals. They should bustle and subdue their opponents. They must bottle up the attack. The halfbacks are basically defenders, but they can also turn defence into attack by driving the ball deep into the forward zone. The centre players are the pivots of play. One minute attacking, the next defending. The forwards are there to attack. They should make open spaces all the time. A crowded attack makes defence easy. Jackson, number five of Carlton, taps towards Gallagher, who sends towards Walls, the centre-half forward. A short punt kick sees Robertson standing unguarded at centre-half forward for Carlton. He lines up the big sticks and fires away, and he's put it through. Another goal to Carlton. 
A long kick by Robertson, unattended at centre-half forward by the Richmond defence. They left the gate open and Robertson made no mistake. One more goal to Carlton and Carlton streaking away from Richmond. Back in the centre once again, the ball is tapped down. Gallagher, the Carlton rover, uh, rather Armstrong, gets onto his left foot, sends out towards Jackson. Jackson, the half-forward flanker for Carlton. Sends a long kick right towards the 10-yard square. But it goes right towards the boundary now. Walls running around the boundary. An impossible shot for goal. Can hardly see daylight between the posts, but he's put it through. It's a goal to Carlton. And that impossible shot by Robert Walls could hardly see daylight between the posts. Another goal to Carlton. In the centre once again. Down to ground it comes. Picked up by Burke of Richmond. Down he goes. Punched away by the Carlton defence. Puts the ball into no man's land. A chance for Kevin Hall of Carlton. He can't control the ball. In chips Hurst. He's always a good kick. There are five types of kick that are mostly used in today's games. The drop kick for distance and accuracy. The ball is held with the fingers spread evenly on each side of the ball. The top seam is lined up with the thigh of the kicking leg, with the instep and with the target. The arms are extended to a natural, not strained distance from the body and the right hand, in this right foot kick, controls the drop of the ball. The ball is dropped at about 45 degrees to the ground. The boot connects immediately after the bounce. The ball is kicked with the lower part of the taut instep. There is a straight, powerful follow-through. The arms maintain balance. The punt kick, a popular kick, especially useful on a wet ground. The right-hand thumb is slightly behind the lacing. The left hand is slightly forward. The ball is held flat to the ground. The right hand controls the drop. The instep connects with the ball at knee height. Again, the leg follows through with straight knee and taut instep. The torpedo punt. The ball is held and dropped at a slight angle across the body and is kicked with the instep. The ball spins in the air and achieves tremendous range and accuracy. It's very effective when kicking into the wind. The drop punt is an accurate kick when kicking for goal or foot passing on a wet day. The ball is held more upright than for the other punt kicks. The ball is controlled almost vertically onto the instep. The foot connects just below knee height. The stab kick moves the ball quickly and accurately at no more than head height. This is the most effective kick for foot passing. The ball is held and dropped at a fairly acute angle, about 60 degrees to the ground. The ball is kicked with a sharp stab action and no follow through. A beautiful kick to position by Hurst, puts Carlton forward. Mackay sends Carlton towards centre-half forward. Here's Jezelenko with a chance. Sheedy of Richmond is brushed aside. A chance for Walls. Gets onto his left boot. Snaps a goal with the left foot. It's high in the air. It's another goal to Carlton. There's the Carlton coach going wild with excitement. And the Richmond coach, from his high vantage point, will have to do something about this 29-point lead which Carlton have established. Umpire Della bounces the ball in the centre once again. And watch this, Roger Dean, the Richmond runner, getting a message from the coach high in the grandstand, is about to go out and talk to one of the Richmond players. Who is it? It's Macmillan who's getting the message from Dean. But look at Hurst, the Carlton defender. He won't let Dean get that message in private to Macmillan. He wants to listen in and find out what the instructions are. Meantime, a good solid mark, an overhead mark by Wayne Walsh, the Richmond halfback flanker. Walsh's kick is in towards the centre of the ground. The players set themselves for the mark. It comes off the ground. A chance now for Boyanich racing through, showing a lot of pace for a man six feet two inches tall. He loses the run of the ball. A hand pass, but in chips Sheedy of Richmond to gather. Sheedy's long left foot kick going up towards the 10-yard square. It's close to the goal line. It's through. It's another goal to Richmond. An opportunist goal. Once more, Richmond going forward. This time, Morris sends them forward. Oh, a fine defensive mark by Southby. Quickly, he realises that there's nobody there on the mark, and he plays on with his left boot. Kicks back towards the centre. Looks for a teammate further afield. Off-hands, it comes to Vincent Waite, the strong Carlton halfback. 
He sends the ball back towards the centre of the ground. Walls has a chance to mark. Here's Keogh. Keogh puts the ball. Oh, no, he doesn't. A beautiful balk by Keogh. Then he kicks for goal. He lines them up from 35 metres out. And he's put another one through for Carlton. Another goal to Carlton. And they're racing away. In the ruck duel following that goal, it's Richmond who have the chance to come forward. But yet again, Carlton dominating the play at this stage of the game. The ball on the ground. Oh, Sheedy of Richmond is grabbed high around the neck. He should have been grabbed between the knee and the shoulder. And Sheedy will have the free kick for Richmond. He elects the drop kick. It's a bad drop kick. Didn't control that one at all well. And the ball comes away towards Hurst. He kicks up towards Jezelenko, who marks. One of the most spectacular features of the game is marking. Catching the ball after it's been kicked more than 10 metres without it touching the ground or another player. The player watches the ball all the time. He moves into the best position to take the mark. A short run before his leap gives him more lift. The arms swing up to meet the ball. They do not poke at it. His opponent will try to spoil the mark by punching the ball away. So he pulls the ball smartly forward. If he marks from behind, he takes the ball back away from his opponent. Not all marks are high. Here the player moves quickly and strongly to the ball and hugs it into his chest. Players, regardless of size, do not advance far in the game until they learn the way to dodge and turn to avoid an opponent. This is the blind turn. This is the balk. Handball is an effective means of quick passing. It's a fast and effective way of opening up play. And whereas kicking demands balance and room, hand passing is possible in many tight situations. The ball must not be thrown or dropped before hitting it with a clenched fist. One of the best high marks in the game is Alex Jezelenko, the Carlton full forward. Richmond with the chance as they swing the ball wide out on the flank. It's Burke who sends the Tigers forward once again, up towards the defensive square. It's punched away. A chance for Richmond. Richardson unattended in the goal square. Kicks it off the ground. It's a goal to Richmond. Quick thinking by the Richmond half forward. In the goal square, the ball came out to him. He didn't bother to pick it up, but just kicked it off the ground and threw for another goal to the Tigers. A capacity crowd watches as Richmond come out to start the second half after a 15-minute break. Carlton, however, lead by 65 points. No worries from the Carlton coach. Carlton with a very big lead at the start of the second half of play, and the ball hits the ground once again. An opportunity for both teams to drive the ball forward. It's bouncing free, tapped away, a chance there for Richmond. The hand pass goes a little astray. Here comes Sheedy once again, loses the run of the ball, but uh, it's picked up by Clay, the Richmond fullback. He clears the defensive line, sends it out. Gallagher, oh, poised on the boundary, kept it in skillfully, kept it inside the line at in play, up towards Nichols. He taps the ball down, but there's a whistle on the play, an infringement against Nichols. He put his hand on his opponent's shoulder when trying to mark the ball. Boyanich of Richmond, with the free kick, sends the Tigers back towards the centre of the ground. It bounces off hands to Gallagher, who's been most prominent in play. He takes two bounces, runs his full measure of distance, fire towards... Go oh, a shocking kick by Gallagher, right off the side of the boot. But the ball tapped down by Walls comes back to Gallagher. This time he takes a right foot kick, puts the ball in play. Here's Bond, the Richmond racehorse, dashing through the centre of the ground. Puts Richmond deep into attack with a 65 metre kick. But there's Mackay. Oops, he's been upset. A clash as Sheedy, the number 10 for Richmond, met Mackay high on the head. And players getting just a little bit heated about that one. But Mackay, although injured, has gone back to take his kick. Mackay sends the ball for Carlton, out of defence, up towards attack. Two Richmond players spoil each other, picked up eventually by Sproul of Richmond. Sends the Tigers back into attack, and a fine mark taken by the Richmond full forward, Rex Hunt. A big fellow this, a policeman is Rex Hunt. He's six feet five inches tall, and there's his kick for goal from 35 metres out, and he's put it through for the Tigers. A little bit anxious are the Carlton coaches. Handball goes away once again. This time it's Dixon of Carlton who sends the Blues forward up towards their attacking zone. 
Richmond under pressure, forced to punch the ball away. Here's a chance for Walls, already has three goals. Pulled by the arm, not around the neck. It appeared as though it might be a free kick, but the umpire has allowed play to go on. Taken by Walsh of Richmond from the half-back line. He sends out, there's no Carlton defender out there near that Richmond player. He sends Richmond across towards centre-half forward. A chance there for Stewart. He can't take the ball, eventually brings it to hand. A short right foot pass. The pack sets themselves, punched away by the defence, down the ground. The free kick not paid, the advantage rule allowed to apply by the umpire. Dixon of Carlton comes back into the play once again, screws round on his right foot. The ball goes clear and free. A brilliant hand pass by Cumming, but oh, it's been intercepted. Here's a chance for Robertson. Rides the bump. In goes Armstrong. A hand pass goes astray. Picked up by O'Connell once again for Carlton as he sends Carlton out of danger. Down towards the ground. Picked up by Gallagher. He fires Carlton forward. Into the centre of the ground goes the ball. It's picked up by Richmond and shot forward. Time ticking away as a brilliant saving mark taken by O'Connell. Only seconds left in the grand final. And there's the siren, and Carlton are premiers. Carlton have won the playoff match. A record score to both teams. Carlton, 177 points to Richmond, 150. A record score for the Victorian Football League Grand Final. The first recorded match was in 1858, between two teams of 40 players each, and it was played between goals a mile apart. It was a mixture of soccer, rugby, Gaelic football and Rafferty's rules. Today, it's Australian football. A skilled game, a hard game, a unique game.